Hey folks, Alex here, healthhacksreviewed.com. So I'm gonna roll right into it. You gotta watch out with the whole body vibration machines. A lot of the specifications out there that you'll read as you're trying to compare machines, those specifications are false. About 90% of machines actually lie. The companies lie in their specs or whatever. Maybe they're lied to by the factories. Let me show you a third-party validation test from third-party engineers versus the actual specs you may come across. If you have any questions about these machines, you want to get a machine, you want to know what are the true specifications for some of these machines, call me, reach out to me, email me, healthhacksreview.com. You'll find my address in the description box. Let's get into it, shall we? Just so you'll believe me. Okay, so here's a perfect example of a machine, a machine that has been on the market quite a while, NitroFit Deluxe. Okay, sold now most commonly at Costco's, um, mainly now in Canada, okay? Now this design of a machine, the shell FYI, just so you know, this actually is the same look that the original Hypervibe company, which is actually a, an excellent vibration machine, um, but they actually copied their look. <laughs> so they, they tried to rip, rip off the success of Hypervibe in Canada, came out with this, this imitation, still currently sell them, but I'm just using it as a one example because all these machines do the same thing. Number one, they say, hey, look at all these benefits it gives you. Note that all these benefits are what you would see in the clinical studies, okay? Listed out in clinical studies and research. However, don't you need a machine that ha meets the same specifications that they use in the studies to get those benefits? Yes, this machine does not do that. So will it give you these benefits? I don't know probably inclined to believe it does not. So, but if these specifications are true, let me zoom in here. If these were true, I would say yes, it probably would give you those benefits because it would be a high energy machine. But this is a perfect example right here. Eight hertz to 30 hertz is the frequency that they're claiming. Okay, just remember, it's just a claim <laughs> until you call them up and say, hey, can you provide me some actual third body validation? that these are your legit specs, uh, 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 that's what they'll say. So um, if you can even get anybody on the line. All right, so eight to 30 Hertz. Okay, that sounds impressive, especially with a price tag that's a few thousand. It makes sense if that was true. 13 millimeter max amplitude. They couldn't possibly be lying to us, right? Well, why would they do that? And then charge us a few thousand dollars. Do you think, do you think they're doing that? Well, let's find out. Let me scroll back out here and go into here. Okay. Does that look familiar? Okay. Well, that's the machine that they tested at Beta Machinery Analysis. Go look it up if you want to. Well-known engineering firm that is capable of doing third-party validations on this, this type of equipment, okay? So they actually did a testing of it, and here we're already going to the specifications, do, 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 a bunch of technical language, uh, some of it I don't even understand. Um, and here we go, down to the actual results, okay? So unloaded test means nobody's standing on the platform or there's no weight on the platform. A loaded test means there's some weight on the platform. Average weight, 150 pounds, average person type of thing. Okay. Um, so here we are at six hertz. If you put the machine on six hertz, this machine, according to their tests, this is what you would get. You would get 2.07 G force. You get 11 displacement. The actual frequency was 7.87. So here we go. I mean, is this good engineering when your display, uh, when your display says, you know, six hertz? but it's actually putting out 7.87. <laughs> it's like, would you expect to drive in your car and say, I'm, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna cruise at 60 miles an hour. Then a cop pulls you over and says, hey, did you know you're doing 73 miles an hour? Uh, no, I just kind of trusted that my odometer was actually working. So would, how, <laughs> how, how long do you think a car would last a certain model on the market when everybody found out the odometers were wrong or the engine was not synced up right? Okay, so they can't even get their speed to work. Mm. Step number one. All right, here's a loaded test. That's normal to see. A slight decline in mil uh, displacement when somebody stands on it, normal. 
slight decline in g-force yeah it's about a normal decline but note 1.63 all right ooh let's cruise at 28 hertz that sounds impressive and believe me folks 28 hertz is actually pretty intense um, if you can pull that off on the machine anyways um, wait a minute analyzed frequency 12.625 hmm but I thought I was cruising at 28 hertz no, nope. lo and behold, it's actually 12.625. Now, you can actually also get a device, as you see in some of my, my earlier review videos on vibration machines, it's a little laser, and it can actually check the speed. It's actually a very simple device. And what I was coming out with was 12 to 15 hertz for most machines. So this makes complete sense to me. Um, but again, look at that discrepancy. The, the displacement is still great. I mean, that's great displacement. Sure, that hasn't really changed. Okay, G-force, 4.4. Wait a second. Where's the G-force? <laughs> so that brings me to point number two. Some, if you're going to get a machine that's a few thousand dollars, they should be telling you the speed. I mean, I'm sorry, not the speed. They should be telling you the speed. They should be telling you the amplitude, and they should be telling you the G-force. Where's the G-force? The reason is because it's cheap and easy from an engineering perspective to produce high frequency. In this case, they're not. <laughs> they're only producing 12. But regardless, even if it was 30, let's just imagine, it's still cheap and easy to produce 30 hertz. Let's just say if that was true. If there was low G-force, but they're not even pulling that off with this machine, by the way. In other words, the real power, the force is in the, in the G-force. Um, and if and that is where it gets expensive. That's where you need good engineering. Amplitude, high amplitude is also easy to pull off, but they're not giving you that. So in other words, what if somebody said, oh, I'm going to do my research. And I, you know what? I'm going to use the formula, the calculation to figure out what the G-force is based off the speed and, and amplitude. I'd say, okay, that's a smart, that's a smart guy. He's, he's using his brain, but let's, let's put in, in, and you can see these calculators on different brands. Some websites have them. Um, I think Galileo is another brand that has this. Anyways, you put in your, this is a basic calculation that's cl pretty accurate. Frequency, 30 hertz. Amplitude, 13. So that machine, uh, the Vibra, um, <laughs> I forget the name of the machine. Uh, the Nitro Fit should be pulling off 23.6. That, that 0.6 is crucial there. Uh, G-Force. 23.6 that's what they're claiming that's what they're really claiming so if they put 23.6 here I mean that would make sense because they basically gave you these other two specs they're not even putting the g-force for whatever reason um, anyways so 23.6 and what are we actually pulling off here at a max setting 4.58 23.6 versus 4.58. Are they a little bit off? I'll let you be the judge. <laughs> anyway, so this is very normal in this category. I've spent a lot of years researching this. Help a lot of folks figure out apple to apple comparison. So check this out. Okay, so now we have 4.5 HEs. Okay. All right, this is good information, is it not? Okay. So let's, let's mosey on over here to Galileo Fitness. Now this is a medical cleared German oscillation device, meaning it moves the same as the nitro fit, the same plate movement. This is kind of like the gold standard. <laughs> it always was for years. Uh, they built the, one of the best machines, basically uh, vibration pivotal machines. Um, I think there is a device or two that may surpass them in, a, in some respects nowadays, but this is an old machine, but still is one of the best, best ones out there. This machine is guess how much folks? $15,000. $15,000 and it's a pain in the ass to get repaired if anybody's thinking about buying it. They don't really do any good support in the United States, but regardless, still a beautiful machine. Um, $15,000. Why is it $15,000? Well, for one thing, because it goes from zero to 15 G's. How much did the nitro fit go to? 4.5. To get to 15 G's, that is what the engineering can cost. How much is that nitro fit, by the way? It's around like 1999, 1999, okay, for reference sake. Sometimes you'll find it for a couple hundred bucks less, more or less, sometimes a couple hundred more. 
versus $15,000 to produce this kind of power. But guess what? Nitrofit claims that they're blowing Galileo out of the water with 23.6 Gs. <laughs> so, wow, that makes, that makes Galileo look pretty poor, doesn't it? Hmm. If that were true. So, um, you know, what's the speed on this? Gosh, you know, it's, let me, let me see if I can scope it out here and you can, and you can find the spec somewhere else. Do, 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 22, 24, 30. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. Yeah, it's at 30 and there's a video of me using this device. You can go find it on YouTube. And it was 30 hertz is their max. You can use 30 hertz when you are super trained. Uh, I love this guy. Great review. Um, absolutely true. 30 hertz is scary. It's, <laughs> you would use it for 20 seconds and then you'd want to get off. Uh, so anyways, um, yeah, most machines don't go that high. There's only a couple other brands that do that are much more reasonably priced than the Galileo. But regardless, so, so some say, hey, is, is this machine specs? What if they're lying too? First off, they've done a ton of studies. Chances of them lying is pretty slim. But let's look at the third party engineering reports. Okay, let's check it out. Uh, where are we? Thank you for your patience. Okay. Here's the firm, Vibe Tech Analysis. Um, here's their certification. Bunch of uh, engineering geniuses over there. All right, so um, Vibe Tech Analysis, um, here it is. It's Now in America, um, it is referred to as the Vibroflex 550. That's the model, okay? And that model is now obsolete, uh, not available anymore as of maybe like two years ago or whatever it was, okay? Um, but it basically was like the U.S. version of the Galileo Fitness. Same company, okay? It's just um, it's just this machine was like a thousand dollars less. Uh, it's about fourteen thousand, something like that. All the specs were identical. Um, same kind of curved design. Everything is the same. Same company. So essentially, uh, let's look at how these uh, third-party engineering reports looked. Uh, if it meets up their claims at five hertz, you're getting about 0.4. Whatever makes sense. Okay, um, five hertz loaded. Yeah, 0.39. Um, 4.8. Now look how close that is. Okay, just FYI, at 5 hertz, 4.91. See how close that is to what they'd actually be showing on the control panel. Good sign of engineering. Good sign of engineering. Great sign of engineering at really high speeds, being really close. Only 0.52 off. Beautiful. That's what we'd expect to see. It's a beautiful German machine, like a, like a Beamer or something like that. Okay, so 14.4 uh, Gs. They're claiming 15 G's. Pretty darn close, isn't it? And my guess is probably in some scenarios, they somehow found a way to measure it at 15 G's. You know what I mean? Um, so they probably weren't lying. Or maybe they just rounded up, you know, because 15 just looks better. <laughs> you know, it could be actually a marketing thing maybe, but I, either way. So, okay, that's pretty much no discrepancy with their claim. Okay, they're not lying. Um, the amplitude, I, I don't remember, but regardless, I'm just checking out one of the more important features here. Um, here it is loaded. So remember that normally when machines report their specifications, they report them under the best conditions possible. And they usually will always report unloaded tests only, the specs. Um, you know, they don't want to say like, oh, but it's only 13.97 or 14. You know, they want that 15, right? <laughs> so they're going to report it unloaded. But either way, Loaded, excellent. We only see like pretty much one down, one G down um, displacement and the frequency, barely a difference. So that's great. Great sign of good engineering once again in a loaded test. Um, but either way, fairly accurate. They're not trying to deceive us in any way. So VibraSlim, Vibra by the way, you can look that up if you want to see some true specs on your own. Just Google VibraSlim. And here we are, um, 3.25 is what it's putting out. I think they're claiming like three times that or four times that. It's a different brand. Anyways, um, so that's just one example of, hey, look, lo and behold, here is actually a vibration machine that the third-party engineering firm actually proved was accurate. It was an accurate specification. Accurate specification of what they're claiming here. Okay? So some companies are inaccurate. Some are accurate. How many companies are inaccurate? Probably 92%. Okay? most of them that's the reality so if you're looking at a few different machines right now chances are 90 percent of the options you're looking at right now 
are in accurate specifications. So what are you looking at? What do you think you're doing? I'm not, I'm not trying to tell you off here. I'm frustrated, if you can't tell. I'm frustrated with the industry and the fact that a consumer, you can't even make an apples to apples comparison. You're trying to compare apples with a broken banana. <laughs> okay, <laughs> the bananas, it's already rotting. You know, you have a rotten piece of fruit. Good luck. Good luck trying to figure that out. Of course, you can call me. <laughs> you can call me. I'll provide you some, some real insight. And uh, I sell many. I sell a few different brands. There's not too many to sell, unfortunately. Anyways, um, so here's just another one. Here's a very popular one, Vibra Pro. Um, very popular in Canada. Um, they make one that looks a little bit different than this. Uh, and it is the same model type of design as the... Uh, of the VMAX Pulsar, if you've been looking at that, or the VT500. Um, there's several models that, that this company uh, made of, and all those specs are bogus. Um, here's one of their newer models, okay? Um, so the charging, uh, they're charging, uh, used to be 3395 This is a classic marketing thing. Now only 1939 Wow, it's a pretty big deduction. Um, okay. So is it worth it? Maybe, maybe if the specifications were accurate. Oh, by the way, let me just, let me just touch on this. I'm not really doing a review on this brand per se. I just wanted to show you examples of true specs versus inaccurates. This, there's a rumor that goes around about, uh, <laughs> no, I like this. This is good. No risk of joint damage. It's zero. Oh, no kidding. Huh? Okay. Well, um, you know, I do actually know a lot of people that have joint damage that have been at, at zero. They've been working out on planet Earth and they still have joint damage. So I don't know how accurate that is. At an elite level, they consider an elite level of training 4.6 Gs. So who, who made that up? Who decided that? The marketing department? Um, look at the specific, look at, look at the studies out there. They're finding that um, you can only achieve a lot of these benefits adequately at, uh, at minimum 10 Gs and higher. So 15 and up, uh, or look, we're getting into the, the red range, better watch out, uh, at 15 and up, and you know, you're basically screwed. All right, you're gonna end up in the hospital. Uh, that's what, that's what they're, they're scaring. Now, why would they say something like this? I saw two other companies do the same thing. They're trying to scare you off the path of a Galileo, a gold standard, one of the best machines that actually did a lot of their own studies. Did they do their studies? They didn't do anything, no. Anyway, so, uh, you know, they're trying to scare you off high energy vibration machines, the one that, that could actually give you health benefits. So then you can say, oh yeah, I don't want anything that actually could prove, could provide me real therapeutic results. I better safely stick within the lower G-force range. So, <laughs> elite. So guess, guess what their G-force probably is. Now, I actually respect them for claiming that their G-force is probably around here <laughs> because because their their G-force actually is is actually around that. So let's take a look here. This is um um yeah, the Viber Pro um yeah, that's not that's not the exact model. Um either way, um let's see it's a Viber Slim Pro, Viber Gym. Um, yeah, anyways, I, uh, I'll, I'll work on pulling that out. But either way, I basically, yeah, I saw third-party engineering reports. I mean, it was pretty much right around that so that it's accurate. Um, but I, they used to market, FYI, other devices, I mean, other models that were claiming much higher G-Force. Uh, but they basically then changed around their marketing campaign um, into this kind of... Uh, scare tactic it's basically just a scare tactic okay to get you off the trail of um it, it's really actually this was specifically um marketed in direct competition um to hypervibe basically to hypervibe this brand let's just uh, pull up one of these here okay so just like in the infrared sauna uh, product category i deal with a lot of categories you see the same kind of companies trying to scare people away from other companies. Um, Hypervibe always tried to educate people on like very high G-force and how important high G-force is. Look, 17 Gs maximum. Pretty darn good, that's pretty high, right? Well, you know, 
better watch out, you know, you could kill yourself, you know, according to them. So uh, that is, so in, in other words, the marketing program works, right? You'd come over here and if you believed in this, if you believed in their claim, which is totally unsubstantiated, you might be reviewing Hypervibe and then, and then you see the 17 Gs and say, uh oh, oh man, I'm scared. I don't want to hurt myself, which is good. You're watching out for yourself, but people will then steer away from this and say, oh, I should stay away from this machine. I could injure myself, right? And now they've just bypassed a therapeutic machine something that could actually maybe get them some of these results. <laughs> so anyways, I'm just giving you a little bit of insight. All these kind of games are played. It's super confusing in the industry. Um, I can help you sort through all of this. I've already sorted through all of it over the years. So it's very simple for me at this point um, to kind of guide you back on track with what might be the best options for yourself or, or for your practice, for your clients or whoever. Um, but anyways, get the point. Um, there are actually third-party specs, and, you know, we know that a lot of these companies are not being honest, okay? So just watch out, uh, watch your pocketbook, be discerning, give me a call, uh, or just shoot me an email anytime, and be happy to help you. Thank you for listening to my long, long video, as they always are super long, and visit my website, healthhacksreviewed.com.